Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about alpha ketoglutarate and a recent paper that came out in Nature Communications that has shown that supplementation of alpha ketoglutarate increases bone mass of aged mice and can protect bone loss in adult mice. And they also show that treatment with alpha ketoglutarate ameliorates the age-related phenotypes of bone-derived stem cells. And this seems to be occurring at the epigenetic level. So there's a lot of concepts to get through in this video. So to break it down, I'll begin by giving an overview to alpha ketoglutarate, which I'll refer to as AKG from now on as it's much easier for me to say. Then we'll look at the results of this publication and analyse what they found out in this paper. And then we'll compare this and have a look at and how this recent news correlates to what's already known about supplementation with AKG. And then we'll bring all of this information together to kind of get an understanding of what we know so far about AKG. And then lastly, excitingly, I will be doing my first ever giveaway, which will be a free bottle of a supplement, which I'll disclose at the end of this video. And this is partly to say thank you for all of your support and contributions to the channel so far in terms of commenting, liking, whatever. I really do appreciate it. And also to announce some support that I'm getting from do not age.org. But as I said, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. So firstly then, what is alpha ketoglutarate or AKG? Well, you're currently looking at it and it's a metabolite found within all of our cells and it plays a really important role in metabolism as it is a key component of the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle results in the production of reduced form of NAD+, NADH, and then this is used by the mitochondria to generate ATP, which is the energy source of a cell. So AKG is really important for cells However, multiple studies have shown that the levels of AKG decline with age. And whilst AKG declines with age, the incidence of osteoporosis increases with age. And osteoporosis is the most prevalent metabolic bone disease that results in weaker bones and an increased fracture risk. And it's characterised by reduced bone mass and changes in the bone microarchitecture. Now, AKG and osteoporosis are both topics that I recently spoke about in separate videos, and so I was really interested when this recent study came out just the other week, alpha ketoglutarate ameliorates age-related osteoporosis via regulating histone methylations. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's break it down. Firstly, why did the researchers decide to bring these two different topics together? Well, it is known that one of the causes of age-related osteoporosis is due to the dysfunction of bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. And these mesenchymal stem cells can generate several different types of cells, including cells found in cartilage, bone and fat. However, one of the hallmarks of ageing are exhaustion of these stem cells, meaning that they can no longer divide and effectively produce these different cell types. And so this is where AKG comes in, because AKG has been shown to extend the lifespan of worms and more recently, mice. And they've also been shown to maintain the pluripotency of embryonic stem cells. And even moreover, administration of AKG can promote bone development in growing rats and lambs. And so the authors thought it'd be interesting to see how AKG could influence age-related osteoporosis. So first up, the authors looked at aged mice and found that, as previously reported, the levels of AKG decline with age. And these levels were rescued when the aged mice were supplemented with AKG. And this rescue appears to be dose-dependent, whereby the more AKG given to the mice, the greater the recovery of the AKG levels. And this recovery of AKG levels was shown to correlate in the aged mice with an increase in the vertebral bone volume, as you can see here. It is worth noticing though that whilst the AKG levels match that of the young mice when the old mice were supplemented with AKG, the recovery isn't quite as significant when you look at the bone volume. However, bone volume changes are likely to be a lot slower and longer than just changes in AKG levels. However, interestingly, they also isolated some of these bone-derived mesenchymal stem cells from aged female mice that were treated with AKG at 0.75% for one month and they cultured these cells and what they could see was that the osteogenic potential of these cells were much greater than control mice that weren't given AKG. For example, this is reflected in the increased expression of osteogenic related genes. So what this effectively means is that these stem cells seem like they have a greater potential to produce more bone cells. Now whilst age-associated osteoporosis occurs in both males and females, 
A primary cause of osteoporosis is postmenopausal estrogen deficiency. And this is partly reflected in their female mice that they were looking at, whereby you can see a rapid decline in the trabecular bone mass shortly after the female mice reached sexual maturity. And this was a 77.5% reduction in the bone volume from two months old to six months old. However, supplementation of 0.25% AKG in the drinking water of the female mice actually attenuated the bone loss, as you can see here. The next thing they did in this study was look at whether or not AKG could help accelerate bone defect healing. And they did this by looking at aged rats. And so the reason behind this is because the healing of bone defects is postponed along with aging. And so in the setup, they treated the rats for two weeks with AKG, or they just had control rats without. And then they performed the surgery whereby they induced damage in the femur bone of the rats. And then two weeks afterwards, they then collected the samples to see how the healing had been affected. And what you can see here is that the rats treated with AKG had a much faster recovery in bone volume. So as a quick recap, so far we've seen that AKG attenuates age-related bone loss and also that AKG accelerates bone defect healing of aged rodents. Now the part of the study that I liked, mainly because I'm biased due to my interest in cellular senescence, was when they looked at how AKG could influence the hallmarks of aged mesenchymal stem cells. And so one of these hallmarks is cellular senescence and there are many ways in which a cell can become senescent which is when a cell stops dividing and secretes a variety of different factors, including inflammatory markers. But one way cells can become senescent is by replicative senescence. So the authors isolated again these bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells from 18-month-old mice and then treated these cells with 2 millimolar AKG. And the treated cells not only exhibited a longer lifespan compared to the control cells, but they also had a reduction of many senescence markers, including P16, P21, P53, my favourite protein, and interleukin-6. And what was also striking is that the cells treated with AKG also had extremely low levels of the phosphorylated form of gamma H2AX, which is the marker of DNA damage. And so this is really interesting. However, so far it hasn't really given us any insight into how AKG might be performing these effects. So to look into this, they continued to work with these isolated mesenchymal stem cells. And what they noticed was that AKG supplementation significantly reduced the levels of two epigenetic marks, H3K9 trimethylation and H3K27 trimethylation. So these two methylation marks are referred to as epigenetic marks as they are found on top of the DNA sequence. And so DNA is compacted within the nucleus of our cells by being wrapped around these histone proteins. And these two marks, when they're present on histone proteins, are commonly associated with heterochromatin, which are densely packed regions of chromatin. And now having gone into this, I feel like this probably does deserve a video of its own. So maybe we'll see a video on that sometime soon. But effectively, increases in these methylation marks has also been associated with aging. And so seeing a reduction in those levels by AKG is somewhat promising, especially with the H3K9 trimethylation mark. I think it's very clear. And so changes in these methylation marks have been associated with changes in gene expression, which might be contributing to these AKG influences we've seen on bone mass and in the reduced senescence phenotype. And the authors subsequently support the importance of these methylation marks by inhibiting a demethylase that would usually remove the methylation marks. And by inhibiting this demethylase, they reduce the benefit of the AKG treatment. So the authors concluded that their findings support that the effect of AKG on the mesenchymal stem cells in terms of aging relies at least partially on the regulation of histone modifications. So how does this fit in with previous work done on AKG? Well, firstly, the senescence work reminded me of the cell metabolism paper that I commented on a couple of months ago now, whereby they saw a reduction in the inflammatory markers in mice supplemented with AKG. And so obviously both these studies have used rodent models to try and understand what AKG is doing. And so this just makes me more curious to eventually hopefully see some human data with regards to AKG. And as I mentioned in my last video on AKG, the company pined that 
publication are currently enrolling participants for a larger randomized double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial. So that will be interesting to see. However, there is a bit of data regarding AKG in humans. For example, this very short publication showed that AKG inhibited osteoporosis development in postmenopausal women. And so this directly goes in line with what we're seeing in these mice models in this paper. And this paper also reinforces the importance of epigenetics and the role that AKG can play in this. For example, it's also known that AKG plays a role in DNA demethylation by acting as a cofactor for TET enzymes that remove these methylation marks. And the other thing worth mentioning is the publication that I mentioned previously about how warmth seems to be preventing bone loss. And the mechanism that underpins that seems to be by an increase in the level of spermidine. And so it raises the question of whether or not AKG and spermidine could be used in combination to have an enhanced effect on ameliorating bone loss. And so I think that would be very interesting to, for a study to be done to examine that. But all in all, this study reinforces the potential therapeutic use of AKG in age-related osteoporosis. And so lastly, as promised, in this video, I will be doing a free giveaway Partly to say thank you for your continued support on this channel, I really do appreciate it. And also to announce some support I'm now going to be receiving from donotage.org, who are dedicated to extending healthy lifespan for as many people as possible. They also have a range of supplements on sale, and if you use the code SHIKI, you will get 10% discount off your order. And so now for the giveaway, if you comment below with some thoughts, opinions, or some questions about the research I've just talked about, you will be entered into this free giveaway of 60 capsules of pure NMN from Do Not Age. Delivery will be free regardless of where you live. And entries will close 48 hours of this video publishing. And as a disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. Please check with your doctor before you take any supplements and do your own research about it. So good luck and I hope you've learned something in this video. And as always, thanks for listening.